Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country and I wanted to make a video for people who want to get started sewing with vinyl but who also sew on a domestic machine. In this video I want to talk about three separate things. I want to talk about the benefits of sewing with vinyl but I also want to go over how you choose which patterns would work best with specific vinyls. And lastly I just want to give some general tips and tricks for making um, your best projects with vinyl. I wanted to make this video because my next tutorial will be me working with vinyl for the exterior of a bag. I was afraid it would make the tutorial too long and give a lot of information that's not relevant to everyone, so I decided to make this video separately. In this video, you're going to see me working with Deja Designs vinyls. This is actually the first order I've received for them. I thought it would be good to show you how I test out vinyl and how I figure out which patterns would work best for a vinyl and also let you get a glimpse of what kind of vinyls I feel are best for domestic machines. All vinyls can be used with domestic machines, it just depends on the application you use them with. So pattern choosing for specific vinyls is very important. Deja Designs is currently only operating on pre-orders. What that means is that she will open a round, you will place your orders for the vinyls or materials you want, the round will close, and then that order will be sent off. It will have a turnaround time of a couple months. The benefits of ordering with the pre-order is that you get unique, high quality vinyls at a lower price. The downsides, of course, is the wait time. I'm going to link Deja Designs information for her Facebook group in the description below. She also writes patterns and I'll actually be doing tutorials for all of her patterns on this channel throughout the year. I'm getting ready to cut to the clip where I go over the rest of the parts of this video, but I did want to make mention that I filmed this a couple weeks ago and I had messed up my camera settings. I'm still learning at all this. So the camera is zoomed in a little bit too much, so there are times the vinyl goes out of frame. I did learn from that mistake and that won't be how the rest of my videos are, but I did want to point it out that it is zoomed in a little bit too close. I hope you gained some knowledge or benefit from this video, and if you have any questions or concerns, just leave them below. I hope to have the next tutorial that I'm working with out by the middle of the week, and I will see you then. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is why do you even want to use vinyl in a bag? If you've been using quilt and co quilting cotton and it's been going well, why would you switch to something else? A couple of reasons. One is because it can be used as a raw edge product. That means it doesn't fray. So you can make quicker projects by not having to sew the pattern right sides together and then turning it out. You can sew it wrong sides together and just sew around and you're done. Wow. Another thing people like about using vinyl is it makes a lot of your bags look like the next level. They look more more professionally made and things like that. It's a fun medium to work with okay. and the last reason people like to use vinyl is because it's quicker. You may need to add Decaville Light to have some more stability but you eliminate that first step of interfacing so you save time. And it can even be cost efficient if you choose vinyl that is kind of cheaper and you figure out and minus out the interfacing cost for your vinyl. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how do I determine what kind of vinyl I can use with a domestic machine? All vinyl can be used on a domestic machine. It may just depend on how you use it. If it is a very stiff vinyl, you may just use it as an overlay. That means that you won't be sewing and turning it right sides together. Let's pull out some of this vinyl and let's look at them. When I pull this out, I can immediately feel how soft it is. Honestly, this vinyl right now in my hand feels like a cotton woven with just a layer of SF-101 on it. Look at this. So you can see the drape. Look at how it just folds on itself. This is a perfect vinyl to sew on a domestic machine. It is super thin. The drape is beautiful. You're not going to have any problems using this type of vinyl in a bag that you sew right sides together and you turn. Also a thing I do is I fold it and see if it has a rounded edge when I fold it. If it creates a sharp crease, that's still fine to use. I just know I wouldn't want to use a, bag, a vinyl that has a sharp crease in a bag with rounded edges. This one I could. Another thing I do is I'll scratch it and see if anything's flaking. If when I pinch it, it looks like it's cracking. 
This vinyl does neither. I know this is a vinyl that I can put back to use with really any project. Okay, I picked this one up and I can even look. This backing is more soft like cloth. This one's more plasticky. I know right away this one's going to be just a slight bit thicker than this one. Oh my gosh. This is my first order from her, so I'm so excited to try this out. Um, this one has a little bit of texture, which I like. Whenever I fold this one, I can see it's a little bit thicker. I still get a rounded edge, but you can see how it's already a little bit more sharp here. The drape looks completely different. When I crumple it, you can even get a sharper point here. This bag is still, this model is still going to be great for a bag that needs to turn. But with this vinyl, what I would probably do when I was sewing it right sides together where it's thicker is I would do two rows of stitches so that whenever I turn the bag, there's less stress on that seam. I would not have to do that with this one where it is so soft, but there's very little stretch at all in this vinyl. When we look at this one, Maybe a little more stretch, not not a lot. If I was using this in a gusset, I would probably add a layer of Decaville Light in the gusset portion. So whenever I was attaching the gusset, it wouldn't stretch. So let me go through this row right here and see if there's any other weights or textures that we can talk about. And then we will go on to discussing some tips and tricks, just so I don't take up all your time. Okay, so these are waterproof canvases. Oh, these are panels, actually. Waterproof panels. Wow. This panels are great for like tote bags or if you want a bag that has a really nice front feature. She has several patterns that would this would be perfect for, so that's really cool. You can see her artwork is stunning. The quality is perfect. When I scratch, I don't have any problems with it flaking or cracking a great great product i love them i love them i'll look through these all later i won't waste your time you will be seeing these in future bags i make um my next tutorial i will be using i will be picking one of these vinyls to use on my next tutorial on my machine the things i do is i use a sharp microtex needle I try to always remember to change my needle to a new needle whenever I start a new sewing project with vinyl. I do is I always sew vinyl with a polyester thread. What I do is I lengthen my stitch length to a 3.5 whenever I'm top stitching. Whenever I'm joining a joining stitch, I usually use around a 3. Sometimes I will lessen the pressure my foot has on it. So whenever you have vinyl, sometimes it's thicker. And when you have those thick layers, you don't want a lot of pressure on your foot weighing down on that. It'll create a drag. It won't let things flow through smoothly. You'll have stretching and bunching, pulling. Another product some people use is a Teflon foot. I use an eighth of an inch foot and I think that's what helps me so better. Also, we don't use pins with vinyl because it's not self-healing. So the holes would say you would only use clips. I do prefer to use these clips. If you use the plastic clips, they will sometimes leave little indentions there. Also with vinyl, you can iron it from the wrong side. I don't take my iron and just sit it on there and leave it for 10 minutes and walk away. I just use the iron while I'm right there watching it and I still use it on high heat though and don't have any problems when I'm adding interfacing or things of that nature. I hope this video helped. I don't know if this video is beneficial or not, but I just didn't want to give all that disinformation whenever I'm doing my tutorial. My next tutorial will be the iris bag. I'm hoping to have that released on Wednesday or Thursday. It will be all vinyl and I won't go through all these tips. We'll just start sewing it and go through it just like my regular tutorials. If you have any questions, concerns, if you have any videos you want to see from me, please let me know and I hope you have a great day sewing and I'll see you soon.